All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network. And today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Mr. Scott Engel, or as Wade would call him, Engley. I don't think Wade messes your name up by half time. I assume it's Engel. Yes. <laughs> okay. <Engel. laughs> Scott, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Very good. Good. We are here live on location at the Pro Sport uh, Truck Hunt in Good Springs, Alabama, uh, we're here at the clubhouse, and Scott has agreed to sit down with me here behind the booth, and I really appreciate it, first of all. Now, we've talked on the on the Joy podcast about the Super Hunt and all that stuff, you know, a few weeks ago. But, you know, really I wanted to get down and sit down with you and just talk about, you know, get, just dive a little deeper. You know, uh, you grew up, I assume you grew up in Ohio? Yep. Uh, not far, 30 minutes from Hillsboro. Yeah, and that's where you currently live now? Yep, live in Hillsboro. Yeah, and what got you into chasing these hounds around? Because, I mean, it's not – we look at it now like it's no big deal that, you know, that's just what people do. But when you think of people, how they get into this sport, I look back and thinking, why on earth do I like this, and how did I keep doing this? <laughs> so yeah. what got you going, Scott? I uh, Well, my grandpa hunted, and I would always want to tag along with them, you know. My dad took me some, and then uh, and then one of the local hunters there, Eli brought, and he got to taking me, Clay Stevens, and I just liked it. I knew the first time I ever went that I liked it. You know, yeah. I mean, it was at night; it was a different style of hunting. You've got to enjoy the the beauty of it. Probably is the dog. Yeah. You know, so I've always been one that liked uh, bird dogs or coon dogs or rabbit dogs, squirrel dogs. Yeah. You know, it's the Labradors with the dog. You know, yeah. so I always liked it and enjoyed it what was those first dogs that you hunted with like were they were they walkers were they what were they they was all uh the first i'm gonna guess the first five or six different dogs I hunted with was all english was they yep because i was in like the heart of uh the hard time yeah line uh, yeah. ed bates calvin hayes they lived 30 minutes from us yeah and uh man that was a good line mm-hmm. i mean them dogs treat coons just like they do today yeah still is yeah what uh what do you remember your first hunt what time of year it was was it summertime winter because i mean i know back when i started they only hunted during coon season you know at home yeah it would have been winter time yeah hide season you know i don't i'm like you i don't really remember hunting in the summer yeah for the first three or four years that i hunted um them them guys uh pleasure hunted basically or hide hunted so it would have all been in the winter it would have been cold you you know cover all carhartt coveralls on and that style of thing did uh when did you get your first dog so my first dog would have probably uh they bred uh my first good pup that i can remember whether they they bred uh a little female eli had called hard time ladybird to uh michigan swamp rooster yeah and uh my dad went and traveled to alabama with eli and and uh Wyatt Wright had actually bought rooster at that time and yeah and uh that would have been my first coon dog was a pup out of that how'd it turn out Hank he was good he was a good good young dog started early of course I walked him in the woods and done everything you're supposed to do you know at that time when he was five six months old and I suppose by the time he was a year old he'd tree his own coon I know as I do these I noticed that these guys and they get their first dog and i think that the dog's going to be good because they just can't help and they're so excited to get it and they put so much effort into it that even though looking back now that we know that we probably did some things wrong just the sheer effort yep will make a dog sometimes you think that was the case with yours i believe it i yeah. believe the you're exactly right a lot of times the first time somebody gets one they're going to put a lot of effort forth in yeah. it and and you can tell it and whether we want to believe it or not, I mean, I still at times don't want to believe it. But the more you can fool with them things as, when they're young and the more you can mold them as, as six, eight, seven-month-old puppies, the better. Yeah, no, I agree. And is that something that you enjoy still, is, is messing with them young dogs or not? Because I know and I get into phases where I just want to mess with a young pup and not do anything else. And then I get phases where I want to go to a hunt. And I don't want to mess with no training, no pup. You know, I want to go win some money or I want to go compete or something like that. And you can't always do those two things at the same time as just one person. So do you still enjoy the, the training, the young pup stuff or not? That's my favorite part of yeah. it. That's my most enjoyment. Um, 
And any time I've got to go to a hunt, it ain't because I got to where I enjoyed the hunts more. Uh Uh-uh. Nope, I've always enjoyed a young dog. Yeah. Starting them puppies more. It's just now become we got more hunts to go to and stay on the road more. It's much harder to do. It is. I know how to do it. I can do it, but it's just having the time to do it. And... Of course you know as we get older we get wives and we get kids and we get families and you got to balance all that stuff and i don't think that a lot of people understand how much time it well you know just like i do how much time it takes to mold a eight week old puppy into something that you can compete with in an event like this and that's the overall goal it, it is and uh I, th- I think it's a good idea for everybody to start with a pup yeah at least once i think you need to you need to start with a pup. You need to hunt a pup and go through the phases, learn how to train one, and it'll help you down the road in every other aspect of this game. When did you uh, move away from the English dogs and into the Walker stuff? So that would have been, oh, 96 or so. Um, I was in the youth race and. You're worse than Finley. I should have warned you. I should, should have turned that thing should off. <laughs> um, I should have. I should have done that. But uh, yeah, we moved. We bought a dog called Awesome Ace from Chris Allen, and uh, we won the overall youth national race that year. Yeah. So that would have been uh, that would have been when we got away from the English dogs. And what possessed you to go with that dog of Chris's? You know that you you got off Chris. Was it a young dog or was it treeing its own coon? Or no, he was old. He was yeah, an older, older dog. dog. Mm-hmm. What possessed you to do that? Was it just because of the race? And you yep, he was on? good. Yeah. And I'd hunted with him. I'd hunted with Chris. And, and I knew he was he was a good dog, easy for a youth kid to yeah. handle. Yeah. Just how, a, how old was you at that time? Oh, I'd have probably been 16, 17. Yeah. So you was driving to some mm-hmm. of these events. I was driving stuff, myself, yeah. 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 I think back then, that's when a lot of the youth hunters started. It's about the time because... Man, dad's busy. Granddad's busy. They can't afford. They can't afford. And they ain't got the time to tote you around. You know, to all these hunts. So a lot of these times, the kids start the youth race when they're sixteen years old and they actually get around. That's that was basically my my deal. Yeah, I could get around and and dad uh, dad bought him for me. Uh, bought half of him. He made yeah. me pay for half of yeah. him, and I think we give thirty five hundred dollars for him. And that quite was a pretty good chunk. Quite a big back money. Then. That's what top dogs went for uh, back then. Yeah, and uh, it was off off from there. Yeah. And uh what was that dog bred like? He was out of uh it it I can remember Chris Allen saying this. I'm saying Dick's jumper and Loveless Kate. You've never heard of either <laughs> no, one of them. I've Dick's never had. Jumper. Yeah. <laughs> um, Is that was that some local stuff that was just around there? I don't or? think anybody had any idea. <laughs> you may have just made it up. I think that was made up, yeah. <laughs> And you know that's we've come a long way since then, of course. But that was not uncommon back in the late '80s to late '90s. That you know, a lot of these guys didn't know what these dogs were out of or what they were doing. People would just stick some papers on some dogs to sell them. You know, the DNA wasn't you know as good as big a deal back then. wasn't at all. Yeah, I mean, when did that come about? I can't remember now. The DNA stuff, oh five, oh six. I'm I'm guessing that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. We've had a lot of good years of really accurate breedings, but up until then, it was the Wild West. Yeah, I can remember going to the trade days on, like, Saturday morning at the Coon Club, and there'd yep. be some of these guys with big, long chains, and they're tied out. Yep. And they would sell the dog, or they'd sell the papers. Yep. You know, you could buy either the one. The dog was cheaper to, without the papers, because yeah, they could take them papers, put it on a different dog. Put it on something else. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that uh, that was, you're right, the Wild West then. How far has it changed now? Yeah. Because I don't, I think everything is... 100 percent legit nowadays you oh know? yeah so. no it's it's super hard especially now with you know and i'm i'm just like everybody else if i have a litter of puppies you know i'm putting it on social media and look how pretty my puppies and stuff everybody mm-hmm. knows i got them dogs you know everybody knows what they're out of and most of these guys are like that too and yeah you know and it's also they've made it easier to single register dogs too to where it doesn't matter what they're out of yep yep you know, made so. it easier to single register and I think probably nowadays everybody wants to know what them things yep. are out of, so yep. they know how to breed them back to something yep. else to, to to better it, you know. Yeah, and that's important. Did you ever breed that dog you got off Chris? Did you ever have any pups out of him? Never bred him. Yeah. Was that one of the reasons you didn't is because you wasn't real sure what he was out of or just never did? No, just never Yeah. Never had thought of that aspect of it. And, uh, you know, we just had him. It wasn't 
we didn't have him all that long, you know, then moved on to to something else. Yeah, what'd you move on to? Well, it wasn't wasn't long after that. Probably went to hunting for Beller. Yeah, you know Russell Beller. How was? Because there's there's some insight that you know not everybody has, including me. But how was it hunting for Russ Beller? Russell was very good. Yeah, I gotta I gotta commend him in every aspect. He uh, he was he was fair about what he did. He treated us right, and uh, he loved to coon hunt. Most people don't realize how yeah. passionate he is about going. That guy loves it, and he loves training one, and he likes to buy one and get it the way he wants it now. How competitive was Russell? Oh, my goodness. There's no <laughs> human on the earth anymore. Uh, yeah, I've heard I've heard stories about even what, what just two years ago his handler was in the Final Four of the UKC World. Is that right? Got second? Yeah. yeah well, that, that, that would have been dog. Keegan. Yeah, the one that gets yeah, scratched. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, Gerald. Mm-hmm. Yep. He owned half that jib. Yeah, and so, I mean, it ain't like Russell's, you know, gone away. No, you know, Russell's is, still there. He has been there, and uh, I won the Breeder of the Year Award at Walker Days, and it was in northern Indiana. So me and my boy Mark Rubel went up there, and on the way home, we stopped at Bellers. Yeah. I hadn't seen him in four or five years, you know, and you can still see that fire in him. He actually bought all that female, Minnie. Yeah. Um, he bought all her from Keegan, and. She was in the hundred thousand dollar final with me. Uh, that's right. Yeah, Echo. that's right. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. So I mean, Russ has always been known to have a super competitive streak, but he's also been known to have really good dogs. Yeah, whether he's handling them or one of his handlers are handling them and all that. Very, very good dogs. Those dogs, all tree coons, they all had some quirk to them, but for the most part, um, I would sure like to have a half a dozen of them females yeah. left around to to be able to breed on yeah what was uh what was you hunting for russ at that time the uh, first one i got from russell was a little female called jukebox mauled yeah pretty uh, nice though yeah she was she was nice she would have been a litter mate to oil can harry yeah maybe yeah they would have been off a jukebox and a pac-man female she'd bought he bought from junior jackson and then uh beller zan um she wins the pkc nationals one year maybe 60 65,000 PKC earnings. Uh, that was bad. That was that was hard to do back then. Yeah, she was a coon trayer, very very good. Um very very good female. All them females Russell had was they was quirky when it rained or light yeah. but they uh man they could treat coons. Did most of them go back to Pac-Man and some of Russell's stuff? All of them. All of them did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did you ever get to hunt with Pac-Man? Nope. Never did. Nope. Uh the first set that I got to hunt with probably would have been like Maud and Oil Can Harry, Hitler, yeah, Saigon. You he know, had some cool names. I know never, Russell. never, never handsome Harry. Yeah, never Pac Man. Yeah. What uh, what'd you move? Did you? How long did you handle for Russell? Uh, Ten years. Yeah, I said I knew it was one, quite a one, while. One streak. Yeah. What was the best dog that you seen come out of that kennel, of Russell's? It's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, there's there's probably several of them that stick out in my mind. And uh, they all probably shined at times when I thought they was the best. I thought Hitler was the best at a time. Psycho, before he become mean, yeah. was probably one of the very best young dogs i ever seen. Most talented, let's put it yeah. that way. He had lots of talent. Um, and then and then Beller's Ann. Um, I don't think anybody could disagree with the amount of coon she could tree. So if I had to be pinned down on one, I I probably wouldn't know which way to go, which way was If the... you had one that you knew what they were and it was eight weeks old and Mojo was a three-year-old, which one would you get? I'd probably have to go with Ann. Yeah. 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 You think she would have crossed good on the on the Mojo stuff? Yeah. 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 What, cut, what style of dog was she? Not a very big hunter, yeah. just a coon treer. Yeah, she tree could coons treat, around you, didn't and around bark dogs a lot on the and, ground. Yeah. Um, but man, she could explode on them trees, and she could find them all all around you. you yeah, know? she had the ability to find more than the rest. Were those dogs that Russell w- with his handlers and that he was hunting and stuff like that? Did they have an independent nature? Because I know back then a lot of dogs were with each other, and that was a, that was common. You know, we didn't have these dead loners as often as we do now. But did some of them have an independent streak? Were they? pack dogs and just quick or what kind yep, of dog? they were they were quick they had an independent streak yeah they would cover some but for the most part they were really quick yeah quick you didn't dogs. have to worry about them covering because they yeah they were the ones that's going to tree the coon first yeah 
did they have you know the, i assume you could tree them quick you know, most of them dogs that were really successful back then were the kind with a really good locate that as soon as they they let it out you could tree them and you knew you was safe you yep. know where they got that kind of dog yep explosive yeah. mouths explosive locates yep that was uh that was them you know yeah so you went 10 years hunting for russell uh when did you kind of get away from just being a handler you know and, and starting your own dogs and and because i assume during all this just like all the handlers today they all raise pups and you know they all have young dogs that are kind of their stuff but they're still on a pay group you know a payroll of some kind or something like that you know but were you doing that this whole time you know raising some pups here and there and hunting or just was you just hunting for russell no uh, well we, we hunted for russell then we we went to we went and hunted for leon for a little stint yeah and uh and then and then come back to russell and uh won the world hunt with gabby yeah beller's gabby yeah which would have been a psycho daughter um and from there big d yeah and when big d kind of started to break down that's when i jumped over and uh i found mojo and uh offered half of mojo to to russell he he wasn't interested and that's when jc kind of got yeah him. yeah what uh what was big d like big d he he beat to his own drum and yeah. he uh he had a good mouth he he began barking early and uh would roam through that country and have that coon yeah i know because you hear stories about him chasing Big D all night and how wild he was. And, you know, he'd, you'd hear Big D over here, and then you'd hear him over here, and he'd he'd beat you, but sometimes he would just be a loose cannon. And when you say he beat to it, he, he went to his own drum. Is that kind of what you're talking about? You know, he wasn't as bad like that for me. Like, really? when, when Don had him, that thing would do a lot of running. Yeah. It seemed like when I got him, he just – he was pretty sensible and went to Dream Coon. Very yeah. smart dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's still Big D stuff running around today, and every, a lot of that stuff goes back. That dog made a big impact on the Walker breed. Yeah, when I bred Big D to Beller, to a female off of Beller's Ann, I mm-hmm. called her Handsome Ann. That's where uh, the lead dog that, that loves grandson wins uh, the Super Stakes. Uh, little D, who wins uh, the pup earnings that year, uh, John Lively. The Ann female Russ Meyer buys. Yeah. Double D that Shaq. Yeah. Ends up with, that's where all those came from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at, my gosh, who's hunting? There's a lot of people that have whole lines of dogs that just come from Big D right now. Mm-hmm. A lot yep. of people. A lot of big-name big, big name dogs, real high-quality winning dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mojo, we're going to spend some time on him, of course. Um, when did you first lay eyes on him? When did you first get to hunt with him? Mm, first got to hunt with him. Boy, boy, that's a good question. No, probably the dog that made the most impact, impact in your life, and you remember can't the remember first the first time, time you hunted with him. <laughs> I had uh, I had talked to several people. I want to say the first time I actually got to hunt with Mojo was after we I'd bought half of him. Oh, you'd bought him just on people's word. Yeah, I bought yeah. him on 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 several guys' word. Yeah, um, Jody Jessup had hunted with him in that Purina race that mm-hmm. year. Said he was really good. Stretch said he was really good. Um. I bought half of him, and and like my wife and I didn't have the the money to be yeah. given for him at that time, and uh, I bought half of him on their word. Yeah, I I had watched scorecards. You know, I can remember seeing him down at Aurora scoring six hundred on three. Yeah, you know, I can just remember seeing, and he was just young. Yeah, you know, he was just young, young. So, Drew Tip Lady hunted with him um, up in Ohio. And I, I, the first time I ever hunted him would have been right there at my house, pleasure. Really? Mm-hmm. What did he do? Do you remember? Uh, he, me and Josh Forsey went. And he flied in there and treated coon. You know. Yeah. What? Uh, did you know? Because I know back then when people spent money on dogs, they they were legit. Uh, they were the real deal. They had to be. You know, you didn't see. Which obviously you trusted these guys' word. You know, those yeah. are some pretty good houndmen that you, that you mentioned. You know, and I've done the same thing when I've called about a dog that I either wanted to buy or try or something like that. You know, you called a good houndsman in the area and you see what he's like and you get an honest assessment. But when did you realize that Mojo was special? You know, that he was that he was different, maybe just a cut above. Well, I assumed that when we bought him. Right. I assumed. But you didn't know for sure. There's always that little little sliver. You of doubt, didn't you know, know for sure yeah. for sure, but. Uh... But a lot of times, I think you've just got to take them and and you've got to make them what you want. You've got to go with them and and get it. And 
I, I would say out of, out of all of them we've had, you really didn't know when you bought them. Yeah. Yeah. But once you see it, uh, I seen Mojo Tree back to back coons in a, in a short distance. And that kind of dog's always what gets me fired up. Yeah. You know, one that can string them together. Yeah. What, uh, how long did you hunt him? Did you immediately start putting him in some events or did you get him used to? Was he a dog that just anybody could turn loose? Was he kind of a one man dog or was he just. I think anybody could have hunted him. The first I had him, I picked him up on like a Monday. And then that Thursday went to South Carolina. No kidding. Uh, to the uh, Jasper Jamboree, which was a big open hunt. Yeah. Yeah. And got in two out of the three nights down there, had big scores. Yeah. You know, treed crap out of coons. Yeah. So, I mean, it didn't take you very long. So then we knew we was. Yeah. And you'd pleasure hunted him around the house a couple nights before you went out there? Maybe two. Yeah. Yep. It was like maybe two nights went out there and he just looked like a rock star. Yeah. What was his style? I mean, I know you look at dogs today and everyone's like, well, this is a dog that's good at doing this or good at doing that. But the great ones are pretty good at doing everything. You know, I assume I assume Mojo was kind of the same kind of dog that he had. Probably had places he succeeded more than others, maybe. But they were probably pretty well rounded. He was a, a very well rounded hound. Good strike dog. Good enough mouth on the ground. Not a great not a great track mouth. You know, chopped a lot. Yeah. Some people held that against him, but yeah. you could tell what kind of track he was running by the amount of barks he'd give you. I mean, if it was a cold track, he wasn't barking much. It'd really be hot track, he's barking every breath. And some tracks he didn't open at all on. But, uh, you know, he would, he would always, uh, he, you never was out of the game with him. If he ever got far enough to be out of here and he'd circle back in, yeah. you know, he just had them intangibles, I guess, that you just can't, you can't find in many of them, you know. You started had, having some, some, some success with him, which back then, you know, the Jasper Jamboree, how many dogs were at that event? Yeah, like probably 80. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't more. like, just to get in the final four, that's. Yeah not easy to do and so what would be a major event back then wouldn't be considered a major event now but when was the best you, pro hunts were probably uh the biggest deal back then aside from the world hunt futurity was was still a thing back then i mean he was still a young dog did he compete in any of those earlier i don't think the futurity was going on then. it wasn't but uh the the truck hunts were big yeah you know everybody wanted to get a truck ticket that's probably yeah. why i was at yeah south carolina um but he won he won about every time we carried him, you know, he yeah. he done good. He treed coons. Yeah. What was his first major win that you would call a major win? First major win would have been the the Robert won the Tree and Walker Coon Hound of the Year with him in the Prina race. Right. That year. And then uh from there, um Triple Crown. UKC Triple Crown. That was hard to win back then, too. And Probably still is now. I don't even know if it's still going on now. I assume yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. You got that's like three hunts combined. And, yeah. then, uh, and then the Super Stakes that year. Yeah. The one year olds. Oh, he won the one year old Super Stakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did not know that. What all did Mojo? The Truth is sponsored by Havoc Hunting Supply. When you are looking for high quality gear, go to the people that understand the demands you put on your gear. Havoc has a full line of top quality hunting gear that meets those demands. Rugged hunting vest for the big game houndsman to the sleek, high speed low drag vest for that late round bound competition hunter. Havoc has what you need. The Havoc website features a complete line of hunting gear for the serious houndsman. And they feature that iconic Havoc logo. Go to HavocHuntingSupply.com and order your gear today. It's time to turn the hounds loose. It's time to wreak some havoc. I uh, won the one-year-old Super Stakes, the two-year-old Super Stakes. Yeah. And then win back-to-back -back Triple Crowns. Robert wins it with him the first year. I win it with him the second year. Um, we was in both finals of the truck hunts. We was second back-to-back -back truck hunts with him that year second and both of them second and how hard was that to take oh goodness <laughs> and and i'm pretty sure second didn't get anything in them no kid in, in them days you know yeah yeah we didn't we didn't get nothing but uh david dial beat us once and ryan krausen beat us in the other one yeah what was what was ryan hunting hoochie mama yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh me ryan zeb three was in there barry kitty um yeah 
So it was Mojo, Zeb3, and Hoochie Mama all in the finals of that. And, man, I hate to leave whoever else was in there out, but I guarantee they was pretty good, too. Yeah, I guarantee you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of who that was. Yeah. But uh, but then uh, all we was in the finals of the, the pro runoff. That was the very last coon hunt I ever hunted him in. Yeah. Was uh, the finals of the pro runoff. What uh, What made you put him up? Worried about getting him run over. Yeah. Cars. And back then... Uh, how many pups did Mojo end up with? And and that probably was the next reason to put him up. You yeah. know, those pups at all. When I win uh, the the two year old Super Stakes with him, they was a uh, you know a pup in the finals of the yeah. one year olds out of. Oh, there. so you guys bred him early. Mm-hmm. So he, yeah, he had pups that were competing in just a division mm-hmm. below him. Just a, that never affected him any. In no, I don't believe it did. Yeah, I really don't. That dude never. The only thing that affected him was me not hunting him as hard and as i should have been yeah what uh what age was he whenever you put him up kind of retired him four yeah so his his pups were three year olds yeah how many did he have a lot of pups on the ground at that time not a lot yeah but the ones he did done good yeah you know so you guys really went to breeding him pretty heavy uh after after his four-year-old birthday roughly uh, after we went to breed him heavy after we'd won that super stake. When I won that two year old super stake yeah. with him, it was game on. Yeah. So what were you seeing out of his pups? You know, were they were they kind of clones of what he were was uh, what he was? Was he throwing something maybe a little different than him, but that was still really good, or was they a lot like Mojo? They was I wanna say they was a lot like him. You yeah. know, they all barked around, they all was gamey. Yeah. You know, he was gamey. Um and they all treat. Yeah. You know, and they, they hadn't been a set of dogs that really treat a whole bunch since Rat Attack, you know. Right, right. And that was, and I, I was talking about this on another podcast here a while back. I believe it was. I mean, I, I do so many of these, I'm hard to keep track. But what makes a good stud? Oh, I know what this was. I was actually talking to Brett Vaughn, who's a, who's a lion hunter in the Southwest. He's a dry ground lion hunter. And he had called me and asked about a strain of walker dogs. And uh, I told him what made a good stud dog in the East as far as, you know, it don't matter whether it's Walker, Blue Tick, English, it's pups that start treeing early because that takes a lot of guesswork out of things uh, and you can really start messing with a pup and that makes it really easy on the guys that don't have to go, you know, that don't have time to go six nights a week and really work on a pup and really get them treeing and doing all the things. It takes a lot of work out of it when these pups start treeing quick. And that's when you look at, rat and track man and nailer and you know a lot of these lipper was a he wasn't exactly a fine example but bone collector was another one you know uh, even trader the dogs they all start treeing quick you know when they're young they start treeing quick so mojo was throwing that but they were still track minded gamey dogs which is kind of rare yep they were all they were all track minded gamey but man they would tree yeah and uh they and they begin to win you know they begin to win early yeah and you said he had a pup in the one-year-old finals while he was a two-year-old? Yeah. What pup was that? That would have been the Butch, Booger yeah. Holler Butch. Yeah. I'll be darned. I did not know that. Nah, I got third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that would have been off the very first cross. You got Mojo. You know, he's kind of retired, and he's still young, but the you don't see that as often today with the money hunts. If a dog can still win, people still want to pack it because it just pays so well. But you got Mojo kind of semi-retired. I assume you're still hunting him every now and then. Or did he just mm-hmm. pretty much live in the house and I pretty much put him up, yeah. Yeah. You just, never did honey much again after that? No. Just worked him. Yeah. You know, kept him in somewhat of health. How'd Mojo like that? Well, you know, he liked <laughs> to go hunting. Yeah. But uh He probably didn't mind laying around every now and then too. Yeah. What uh what'd you move on to after Mojo to good to go compete still? Well, Mason was coming yeah. at that time and I really liked him. Tap. Mm-hmm. You hunted with Tap some. I had, I had Mason and Tap at that time. Yeah. What'd you, what'd you see out of Mason? Were just. You, was he a young dog when mm-hmm. you got him? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just, uh, man, he had a very good mouth. Better mouth than Mojo. Yeah. Probably better looking than Mojo. And probably even moved better than Mojo. Yeah. So I thought there were several things that uh, now where he fell short of Mojo was treeing different styles of coon he probably wasn't as good as mojo was a tree and different style of coon but uh i knew he was gonna be 
Yeah. Hard to handle. What style of coon, what difference was the style of coon that he needed versus what Mojo could tree? He would run more of a, he would need a track. He needed a track. He so, wasn't going to lay up a lot of coons. He wasn't going to lay up a lot of coons. Yeah. He was going to, he was going to, he was going to need a track in there. And it wasn't until he got, heck, I want to say three or four before he started laying coons up. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some dogs like that. And, you know, you, you, there's times where you want to need that extra tree and you want a dog to just get treed every now and then and stuff like that. But those dogs are more accurate. The dogs that need a track tend to be super accurate. You don't have to worry yeah. about, not that Mojo wasn't, but you know, when you hear a dog that you know needs a track and they run a good track and they get treed, you're, you you do not have to worry about not looking at a coon either. Yeah, that's right. You know, so at that time, cause here's a problem. A lot of guys with really good stud dogs, especially have is, there's a lot of good pups to choose from and so were you struggling because you talked about tap you talked about mason and around that area when mason was hot there were a lot of mojo pups that were winning and doing well and i assume you had more than one at the time too so was it difficult to pick one to go to town with well we had i'd won the baby stakes with mr green and that wasn't no bad one either um they really wasn't i guess i pick them different i i just uh I just, whichever one I finally just get stuck on and say, you're, yeah. you're it, that's yeah. the one we go with. And I think that still runs true today of how, however I get one, it just seems like, well, this is the one we're going to yeah. put our time into and we're going to live and die by. And, and, uh, Mason just fell right into where he needed to be. Yeah. Tell me about what, what all you did with Mason. What all did he win? Oh, we uh, we won about ninety thousand there that year. CHKC World Hunt. We were second in the PKC Nationals, second in the Pro Run. Won several Pro Hunts. Won the the last time I was right here, Brad said it was at Lexington. But the yeah. last time I was here, Mason won the the Lexington Pro Hunt. And you didn't hardly come from Ohio, no, and come down here to Alabama and beat no. and beat these guys. You know, no. no, there's a lot of good dogs on their home turf here. It's yeah. tough to win. It's way different than what I've got at yeah. home. Well, let's I want to talk about that. What is your hunting like at home? It's uh we we've got more roads and people than we need. Really? Is, but, it, is uh, it worse than here? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it probably is. And uh I can turn a dog about once and then that's it. I got to yeah. get him and get out of there and go somewhere else. How do you uh manage that because you know just as well as I do that the recut is so important and if you don't have the big areas to recut, you'd think you'd be at a disadvantage. So I have to go to Randy's. That's where I go to Randy's or off somewhere else. Um, cause there's no recutting in my house. You're not going to, really? it's not going to happen. The, even the solar panel people come in there. Our County has got more solar panels in it than the rest of the, the state put together. Really? So that took out yeah. tens of thousands of my acres of hunting. Yeah. It's covered in solar panels. Yeah. New, new green deal. That's fantastic. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's when I go to Randy's or Mississippi we used to go to Arkansas to the White River. Yeah. Um, and then things just going to have to figure it out while I'm, while I'm there, you know. Yeah. I mean, that is – I I've never seen anybody that won, especially at the level that you went at, that doesn't have an area where they can just recut dogs. I can promise you I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. I, don't. I mean, you've seen where we hunt, and that's we're at such an advantage there as compared yeah. to a lot of these places that we go because there's no people. You know, it's big tracks of ground. We can just go cut them until they get tired of cutting. Yeah. Yeah, so. you guys have got the best, but they've been, you know, they've been several come out of our country right there. That's always, uh, that's been good and, uh, that win, you know, yeah. they've been several good hounds and good handlers. Well, who do you got? I mean, there's a lot of good hounds and handlers in Ohio. Who do you got close to you? Oh, well, we got Eric Pye, you know, yeah. he's, uh, he's tough as they get. And, uh, Timmy Waters, yeah. he's one and one for years. And of course, Greg's down in there. Um, Scott Bates come from down there. He won the world hunt. Um, Ed and Calvin, Ed Bates, Calvin yeah. Hayes, you know, they won the world hunt with spec back, I'm yeah. guessing sixties. Yeah, probably. So it, I mean, it's always, they've always been a, a good, good dog or two come out of there. Yeah. What about back to Mason? Uh, you said you won $90,000 with him in that year and, uh, you won the CHKC world hunt. Yeah. I did not know that. I need to do better research before I come into these things. <laughs> that would have been the first $40,000 first place CHKC. Yeah. And that was a... For those that don't remember, because it's been a while since CHKC's been around, but that was a huge deal down in Aurora. Yeah. I mean, that was 
the best of the best was there. It was hard to win. Uh, the hunting was tough. You know, at times in the LBL, you'd go in there and sometimes you'd have a hard time scratching the coon out. Sometimes there'd be, and don't get me wrong, I've seen some good hunting down there where you treat multiple coons in a cast, but uh, that was not an easy task, an easy feat to do. Who'd you have in the finals of that? Uh, I'm pretty sure second was Nikki Hale. And was he hunting off? I think so. Yeah. Man, that's been a, that's been a while ago. Nikki was in there. Jesse Alexander was in there. Mm-hmm. What's it like to be in so many big events that you can't remember the final four? Because I've only been in like one, and I remember every second of it. <laughs> and I hate I can't remember who else is in there. That's awful. Um, I don't know my memories. My memory ain't as good as it used to be. How do you remember how Mason looked in that final round? I remember. I got very wet. <laughs> um, we went down to them them bottoms that Ronnie Bone hunted. Yeah, um, Kaler Bottoms, I think. And and man, it was wet. It was cold. It was raining. And we went over our waist a couple times yeah. in water. But uh, he treated a couple coons. Nikki's treated a coon, and uh, I remember uh, Mike Creasy, I believe, judged. Yeah, was our judge. But um, look good enough. They look good enough, yeah. <laughs> and that was because, I mean, PKC's always been, they've always hunted for money. Uh, but at that time, the world hunt paid pretty good, and the pro hunts paid all right. You know, you'd get a $4,000 check for pro hunt win back then. I think it was 4000 or 4500 I never got that far. We won several yeah. um, pro hunts with Mason that year. Well, we won the first two. Yeah. We won. We won uh, South Carolina and one here at Lexington, Alabama, and then that, he got sick. You know, but I think we won. I don't know. All in all, probably won six or seven pro hunts. With really, Mason. and mm-hmm. those were hard to win. For those that don't remember, yeah. that was where the best. It was just like this. Uh, we're here at the pro sport truck hunt, and you're looking at the same caliber of dog and the same co- caliber of competition as you did back in the day with the with the pro hunts. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the pro circuit really yes yeah. i i agree with you the there. very best of the best yeah you said mason got sick what did he come down with he got a a weed seed uh that he'd inhaled or mm-hmm. or swallowed that that it got through his esophagus somehow got in between in his chest cavity yeah and uh and uh or no Matt mason got the blasto oh was it mason? Good. he got yeah. the blast that was rodeo that got i the, got you he, he got blasto and he was down for six months yeah. of treatment well that's lucky i mean you're lucky to even keep him i know blasto's nasty comes back out um comes back out of it and there's like one pro hunt left and that's where i get in the final four and i get barred yeah you know because i do you want to talk about that oh I'm, let's talk about i'm it. more than more than open with it i was going to ask you before this if we could talk about it but uh the story was that you were winning the cast and you told them guys look look let's just call it i'll give you some your entry fee back or whatever and we'll just get out of here because mason was sick is that is that pretty much how it went there's uh i'm 300 i got 325 yeah and nobody else has got a point uh two guys quit and there's there's one one boy left and the vet had told me when i came to this hunt like do not be you know, you don't want to be hunting this dog. Yeah. You know, you don't need to have, but I know I'm going to have to, and I don't know if Coy and I was, was dead even. It was Coy hunting Bill. Bill. Yeah. I don't know if we were dead even or where we was at, but I knew I was going to have to, to make an appearance here yeah. or get some money to go on the vet. You know, she had told me, do not, do not hunt, uh, you know, don't have him on the ground any longer than you have to. Yeah. So. Nevertheless, yeah, we was uh, I was three hundred twenty-five up, and they was twenty-one, twenty-two minutes or something left. That fella's dog wasn't doing anything, and I offered him his money back to to quit, you know. Mm-hmm. In which um, he took, and then and turned me in for it, you know. Come back in. I think he thought he might be going to get. Did he give you the three hundred back? The cast win. Did no, he? I never did. <laughs> No, I never got that back. <laughs> you would think if he turned you in, he'd yeah. at least give you he, your money back. Would, uh, I, w- I should have. <laughs> but, 
But and so what'd you get out of that? So I got barred for like well, crucified for like the thinking it was the worst thing in the world. Well, yeah. Nine thousand other things that that I thought probably could have been worse than what I did, but whatever you know. Yeah. So I I did my uh, oh I, I guess I was barred for a couple of years. Was it that long? Mm-hmm. They brought you back. Uh, didn't you judge the youth world and they, mm-hmm. they brought you back because Jed was under suspension at the same time, if I remember right. And I think it was the same deal he gave him, you know, come out and judge and we'll, we'll get you ready to go by the world time. I think is how that went. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I did. I did a couple of years that I was, I was barred for and, uh, and I regret doing it probably wasn't right, but yeah. then been at the same token. Um, you know, I've got to try to save my dog in any way I could. And, did I feel at the end of the day that 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 kid had a chance? No. Yeah. He didn't have no prayer winning. No, no, he didn't. If he's down three twenty five with twenty minutes to go and his dog ain't doing it, I assume his dog struck for a quarter at this time too. Then mm-hmm. trailing. Yeah. So he's got he's right, three he's three coons down. Right back by the truck where we started. It literally yeah. was. So he's got to tree three coons in twenty one minutes, and that's score it, shine it, recut. Yeah. Score it, shine it, recut, and, and me do not do again. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and I've been told that it wasn't a. You know, that that was a pretty minor offense to get two years out of, I would think. But you took it. You yeah. Ca- you came back, and you came back with the vengeance. Yeah, we, we come back, and it was all fine. And, yeah. And uh, maybe it was a blessing, you know. Yeah. I know. Uh, and it's not like that hasn't happened to top handlers in the past. I don't know very many of them that haven't took a short break via via pkc letter <laughs> you know most of them have you know it's not as big a deal as people make it out especially then thank god social media wasn't as big a deal back then as it is now i think it was probably getting started yeah it was then. i think it was back then but it wasn't it, they didn't just just absolutely gut you like they do anymore I no think. i don't think so <laughs> yeah no i think everybody that that got the story was either okay with it or they wasn't and, yeah yeah and uh it was uh, it opened my eyes up though. I yeah. realized, you know, hey, <clears throat> I shouldn't have done it. You yeah. know, simple yeah. as that. And uh, it would have been a whole lot easier to hunt that other twenty three minutes and yeah, went right on. And I won't make that mistake anymore. What about did they strip? Because I mean, this is for the pro race. I assume is where you brought mm-hmm. Mason back, right? Yep. Did they? Uh, did you get a win the pro race? No. Nope. All that's gone. Stripped the pro race. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he would have been the pro race champion, mm-hmm. which at that time was huge. It was big time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was probably the hardest. I'm going to say winning nationals was right up there too, but those were hand in hand at that time, the two hardest things you could do with a dog. That was a very tough race. Yeah. I mean, a very difficult race. So with that break, uh, Mason's done, you know, pretty much. Uh, did Mason compete anymore without you while you were, while you were suspended or was that pretty much it for Mason? No, that was, uh, that was it for Mason. He, uh, he never was right Yeah. after that. Yeah. Like he would still tree coons and, and look okay, but he never was as half as good as he was. He yeah. couldn't string them together like he did. And, uh, and it, and the blasto never affected his breeding. Yeah. So we was able to go to breeding him. So, yeah. you know, and that's how many pups. Cause I mean, you still, I think you still got breedings on Mojo and Mason both, mm-hmm. right? And you're still every now and then there'll, there'll be a female bred to them. Yep, every right? every now and again, yeah. once a month, maybe. Yeah. So what? Uh, what? How many pups do those does Mason got on the ground now? Mason probably don't have near as many as as what Mojo. Mojo's I'm guessing in the thirty fives. Yeah. Um, Mason probably closer to fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. So thirty five hundred for Mojo, fifteen hundred for Mason. Now Mason threw some good pups too. Uh, what do you, did you get something out of Mason after that? Or were you back to Mojo Dogs, or what was what'd you hunt after Mason? Well, then then kind of come along the good dark female yep. that was off of yep. off of Mojo, and uh, Tazzy Tazzy was out of Mason. Yeah. Both those two were really good females. We hunted them for a while. Yeah, won the CHKC World again with with dark. So Mason would have been in twelve, and then the dark female would have been seventeen. Yeah, and the dark female come on against some bad luck too. She got sick, if I remember right as well. Yep. Yep. Right after, uh, right after we had won the, yeah. the CHKC world hunt. Yeah. What was wrong with her? They called it autoimmune condition. Oh, yeah. You know, she just had a, her, her, her body told her body to overfight an infection yeah. and crazy. It was a crazy deal. Yeah, Just a fluke. What was she like? She was a coon trier. Yeah. She probably was 
more like Beller's Ann that I had described that could trim all around you or wherever you wanted, you know. Yeah. She would, uh, she'd put them up. Good mouth, explosive. I'd sure like to have her now. Yeah. Did she ever get, how old was she when she died? Uh, four. Did she ever have any pups? She had, uh, well, the one litter of Slims. Yeah. Which would be uh, Moon, a little female called Summer Shade who got yeah. ate by an alligator that won a bunch. And then After Dark, who the Perriman yeah. boy hunts all the time. Yeah. Oh, she, he was out of dark or she, yeah, he's out of dark. Mm, after dark. Yeah, yep. That makes sense. What about, uh, what about moon? Moon, moon, moon is a lot like the dark female, way talented yeah. as far as tree and coons, but, uh, he Cause, has trouble hanging up together in them yeah, hunts. Cause you hear Jason Darty talking. He knows the whole secret and how to, how to do it. Maybe you should let him hunt and handle him. <laughs> well, we will do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not doubting Doctor though. No, no, I'm not either. He's a good dog man. I like Jason, but he's he likes to talk too. We couldn't uh Rand, me or Randy either one, we never could get uh that dog would look so good coon hunting yeah. during the week. And then when you go to a hunt, it was jeez. Yeah. Crazy. The wheels fall off. The wheels fell fall, fell off. And what and I've preached this before on this very podcast, what people don't understand is that's not uncommon. Uh I always say they all look real good around the house, you know. So, I mean, when you get a dog that'll travel, uh, it's rare. You know, it's not something that yeah. that everything can do. And so, can you? And you can't always see that until you take them down the road and travel with them. Was that the case with Moon? You know, you guys pick him up, turn him loose, dog looks great, and then you take him to a hunt. I mean, I would have I mean, never guessed, guessed that out of Moon because really? when we bought him. I believe he treated six or seven coons that night. And I remember he looked as good as what I thought I'd yeah. ever tried a dog out. And I think that was the very best night. Really? Yeah. I've never well, seen him look. Well, if a dog's going to look good, that's the night to yeah. do it is when you're getting ready to sell <laughs> Not I, if you're I, the buyer, but if I you're the seen seller. him look good many other times. But, yeah. man, he just uh, he just couldn't hold it together. Yeah. I mean, that's I got a whole I got a whole kennel full of just like him. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty good right behind the house, but I get to packing them around, and you never know. But uh, you guys done because you got what you got? Man, you got Moon in at Super Stakes right after you got him, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got him in. Well, he's got in about every year at the Super Stakes. Mandy, uh, Randy made a little run at the World Hunt with yeah. him a couple years ago. Yeah, is Moon still around? Do you guys still have yep. him? Yep, we sold half of him to Levi Stevenson. Yeah, and Jason Stevenson, and thought maybe the change of yeah. of uh, address might help him, and and they ended up. Uh, they hunt him a little bit, but yeah. they they send him back to Randy some, you know. Yeah. Randy still hunts him, and he still looks good. Yeah. He would have been next in line to get to hunt in the Invitational. Yeah. What about, uh, when did you come along rodeo? Let's start talking a little rodeo here. So when I come along rodeo, would have been, uh, I heard some guys talking about him. Uh, Randy Stedman had told me, hey, that dog's pretty good. Mike Carroll was mm -hmm. in a cast where he looked pretty good, and. I listened about him, and uh, I had just like Mojo, I had several people tell me, "Hey, that dog's pretty good. You better better check him out." And I never hunted with him until after we bought him. Yeah, but the, fir the first night we bought him, I think he he treed ten or twelve coons. Yeah, we shot out to him, and I knew right then. I thought I told Randy, I said, "Hey, if this thing can do this, yeah, we're on." When did you first start putting him in hunts? Because I mean, he me if I remember right. All of a sudden, you show up with rodeo, and you guys immediately go to. Win it would have been the next weekend. Yeah, I mean, it would have been the same deal. Like, yeah, game on the very next weekend. And you, of course, you've done a lot with rodeo too, but you also won a UKC World Championship with him. And as everybody knows, that's <clears> one of the premier events and probably the longest running premier event that's still alive today. And definitely no easy task. Uh, tell me about that world hunt run with rodeo. I knew um, Maynard kind of laughs at me because I told him before we went, I'm like, right along here, we're going to win this thing. Yeah. And uh, I knew the dog was looking right. He was designed for them kind of cast, really. You know, I mean, he was he was one that could get in the mix with him yeah. or, or be by himself. And I just, he was looking right. We went up there and, uh, shit, he just looked good. He looked good yeah. every round. I mean, um probably one of the worst rounds would have been the the final you know he took yeah. one coon in it and a circle but we didn't do nothing else either yeah you yeah. know that is uh what people don't understand and it's always the last round that gets the publicity 
you know, it's always the finals of the UKC World Hunt or the finals of a pro hunt or the finals of a, a major event like Nationals or PKC World or something. And people don't understand a lot of times what them dogs went through to get to that point. You know, those dogs are wore out. Uh, they've been hunted hard coming into it. They've been hunted hard all week. They've been in some really high stress situations, you know. And not very often do dogs look at their best in the finals of a major event. I'm going to say hardly ever. A goose comes to mind a couple of years ago when he put on that clinic at the finals of PKC World. But most of them final cast, you know, you're hunting worn out dogs, worn out handlers in dogged out spots. And, you know, so they don't look as good as they do. And so I don't think the dogs get the credit. You know, everybody gets on the on the social media and says, well, my dog can do that. They only treat two coons in two hours or whatever. But how do you how do you get a dog ready for the, those finals? Because it's not like you just got to go out. and Some of them you do. Some of them you just got to go turn them loose by themselves and get them in shape and take them. But those are pretty rare. Is, was rodeo like that? Was mojo like that? Or did you have to do something extra special to prepare them? Pretty much both of those two. And I compare them two more than I do Mason. They was more like each other. Um, both those two, you pretty much hunted them by yep. themselves to get them ready. And they would look okay. And then when they got in the pack, they was, uh, yep. they was ready to go. You know, they were, they were the ones that was ready to rumble, you know, um, you're right about the the fact of being wore out and the stress and the travel mm-hmm. and the dog box and and then the fact that they carry a there's nothing that burns my hind end more than than the than, than them to carry a on the final cast to a place that already been yep. hunted you know yep. and I mean but you got to look at all that yeah so you're right you can't grade a dog on that final cast every time because normally. It, it ain't the same. Yeah. They're wore out. They the places have been dogged out. Um, it's just having the the luck of I, I guess finding the coon and yeah. I've always we've had that. I've always said if I'm ever blessed with a dog good enough and the opportunity enough to be in the finals of a world hunt, all I ask is that dog to treat me one coon and stay out of trouble. Yeah. If you just treat me one coon in that finals and stay out of trouble, I'll take it, you know, because that's going to win 65, 70% of those final casts. Yeah. You know, when you look back at the scorecards and then everybody, of course, like you said, everybody gets to complain and all oh, the dogs aren't that good. The dogs aren't that good. Well, that dog scored 775 early Monday, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a big difference there. Yeah. If, if they're not, if the coons ain't there, well, they put them at too. They yeah. can't treat them. Yeah. They can't make them up. Um, we were talking last night. We got to go hunt with uh, Echo last night, and we'll get into a little bit of Echo real quick. But uh, you talked about how Echo's a little – he's a, he's an extra gear in a cast, and you said rodeo was the same way. Uh, that's another thing that needs to be considered when people go to pleasure hunt with one of these dogs. You know, they're not the same in a cast. It goes both ways. We talked about how uh, they're good around the house by themselves, and then they fall apart in a cast. Well, some of these dogs are – are good around the house and they, they'll still treat coons but they have that extra gear you know when you line three strange dogs loose with them you know or turn them loose with them away from the house and you see the same thing out of echo and rodeo and some of them others too huh that's uh yeah that that would be the exact opposite of what what's happened with moon yeah. you know they're they seem to be more ready echo in my opinion is the best he's ever been in cast yeah and that's you know, the best he looks. That's the best I've ever seen him. Well, he's looked pretty good this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What well, you guys have won over three hundred thousand uh, dollars since you got started hunting Echo, right? Yep. Like, well, right at three hundred. Right at three hundred. Yeah. Uh, you won the Jarvis Mumf- Jarvis Humphreys Memorial Hunt, uh, hundred thousand dollar hunt. You won the Pro Sport hundred thousand dollar hunt, and what else? We won uh, a truck, you know, yeah. the truck hunt in uh, South Carolina. Yeah. And then we won the integrity at uh, Claremont, Illinois. Yeah. So what did you, when you come across Echo, because Echo had been passed around. Echo had been in the hands of some good houndsmen, too. Uh, when you guys decided to purchase Echo and start putting him on the road, what did you like about him? I assume that wasn't a deal where you just called around and everybody said that was a good dog and you bought him. On well, this case, I'm guessing you hunted with him a few times. <laughs> I had hunted with him probably six, seven times before while Doug had him. Yeah. And I knew if Doug liked him that I would like him. Yeah. Um, he hunts the same country that I do. His is a little bigger than mine. 
he may be able to recut some, but yeah. I bet not much. Yeah. Um, I knew Doug. I had thought back two years ago when we was at our invitational. I thought, man, Echo and Rodeo is the two best dogs yeah. going. You know that we got in on Friday night and we 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 split. And, uh, Do you wish you'd have hunted that off now? No, Lord, no. <laughs> no. Um, Doug don't, normally don't split. Yeah. But it was raining a little bit, and I I think we just – Talked him into we, it. We talked each other <laughs> begged, into, begged it, you know. him into it. Um, but I knew if, if he liked him – and when I hunted with Echo, I liked him. Yeah. I thought, man, that dog's got – he's got something you can yeah. work with, you know. And we were talking last night. You haven't bred many females to Echo. Uh, is that something you're planning on doing in the future? So when we bought him, we realized we – I wanted to put a little more size on on some of yeah. mine, uh, maybe a little more leg under him. And uh, we kind of looked around at what what would it – what would what would fit right. And uh, I thought Echo would be a good yeah. complement to, you know, our – to our stuff would be something totally – Out of the box. Out of the box yeah. and uh, – I won the super stakes with his daddy, yep. Clayton. Um, he's a lot like Clayton, just faster. Yeah. And uh, that's why we decided to decided to try it. But at the time we bought him, we didn't know because they'd yeah. been some. He'd been down for a while. Yeah. What uh. You you think breeding females to him? Because I mean, there aren't very many male dogs, and we've seen several. I mean, there's I guess there are, but. You know, you go to breeding females to them, and it kind of changes them a little bit. Maybe takes a little gear out from underneath them. Uh, maybe they do some things that they're not usually used to doing after that. Do you, you think you're going to see any of that at Echo? You've already bred a few females. You guys plan on the dog's older. He's seven years old, but he's still in great shape. He's still moving around. He's still winning. Uh, do you guys plan on, you know, maybe doing a little more stud and a little less hunting, or are you going to keep hunting him and see what happens? You know, I don't know the answer to that. Um we're gonna we're gonna keep hunting him, yeah, and we're not gonna breed many to him that I foresee. Yeah, um, we bred three to him, and uh, I can't say that I've seen a big difference out of him since them three. Yeah. But I thought going to the PKC World Hunt this year, we had a really good shot of winning, and uh, I got in on Monday and then lost crazy. Uh, on friday um what happened on friday i had uh oh we i had 575 luck it had three and a quarter with about 13 minutes left in the hunt and mine hits a gravel road blows out and luck it's trees two coons and, no and he and he beats me and beats me square fair yeah. and square you know but uh uh it 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 just was kind of crazy how it all come yeah. like how it all happened right there and how much time was left? 13 minutes. They treed two coons in 13 and minutes. And scored on, treed two coons in 13 minutes, and I couldn't hear. Mine had gotten down a gravel road out of hearing. Um, but anyway, that dog was looking really good then. Since then, we've won one out of three nights, seems yeah. like, you know. Um, we win it all one night at Mark Hall's. We get in one night at Randy's. Um he ain't looked as good. He just got over a urinary tract infection. Yeah. So maybe that's caused it. But uh, I hope the breeding the three yeah. females didn't. That's the thing. You just don't know you it until don't... You, you try. I'll let you know Yeah. come May. I <laughs> yeah. can tell you that. I'll yeah. know by then. So <clears throat> one last thing, Scott. We're here at the Pro Sport Hunt. And, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to compete in a couple of these. And now here we're doing this podcast here in front of the Joy booth. Joy's doing some coverage for them. Uh, Joy and Pro Sport have a partnership that I'm really fond of, and I really like what you guys are doing. And uh, of course, I'm going to get Greg here and talk to him about that too for the Joy podcast. But what uh, what possessed you guys to do this, and what were you seeing? You seen there was there's obviously room for Pro Sport. These hunts are selling out quick. Uh, everybody seems to be pretty happy with them. I know I enjoy the rule set, and I enjoy the the level of competition, and. Uh, you know, you guys are doing great things. What are you guys' plans for the future of pro sport? You know, we just wanted to to put together. This started with just putting together a hunt that was quality. Yeah. That was in a quality place. And that was over in a weekend. Yeah. Let's say, where you didn't have to stay. 
you didn't have to run a month to get a yeah to to get a win, or you didn't have to stay uh, all week, yeah. Plus, uh, per se, um, and that's where this all started at. And then, man, we did our first hunt, and everybody loved it. And our second one, and third one, and we're like, well, why if we can't if we can't come out here and, and if we can come out here and put a quality event on that that makes all the coon hunters happy, better's the better's the industry. Um, we got to do it, you know. Yeah. And it is, and we've enjoyed it. Greg's yeah. enjoyed coming to these things, and and uh, and the and the people. If it wasn't for you guys coming and the people coming, it wouldn't you know it wouldn't be here. It wouldn't make it near as fun. So, yeah. it's kind of interesting traveling all over, seeing these people, being out there on them final casts. I, uh, if I'm not in the final cast, I want to be out there on it just yeah. to see because it is worthy of seeing we have seen some real shootouts and yeah. uh some very 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 good stuff on these final on these final casts i think i mean really the level of competition here and the fact that these dogs you know you get a dog early in friday night he hunts two hours he hunts for a truck you know the next night they're they're not wore out like you said, they're in fantastic spots. You guys have been pretty picky about where you hold these things. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we got you got to be that way. Yes, and uh, all the guide quality has been really good. All the ground has been really good on the two that I participated in. Of course, one of them I was guiding, so I can't. I, I'm going to take some credit there. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, you guys, when you see this, was it something that you knew would take off? after the first couple or were you still pretty hesitant until or are you still hesitant oh i don't think we knew it no yeah i think we was very <laughs> is greg skeptical. is greg gonna say he knew it the whole time no he's <laughs> gonna he's gonna be more skeptical yeah. with what it worked than me yeah. i bet you he he says he's yeah. he was more skeptical of it and we still are yeah. i guess we still are we're trying to take it slow we don't want because believe me we got plenty of people telling us hey you need to do this and no you, need to do you that. don't and, you uh, don't we don't want to – everything we do, we want to be quality yep. and uh, not as much quantity. And, hey, it's hard keeping everybody happy. It is, and we've got three major registries now. Uh, I always said when CHKC – and CHKC had a good thing going for a long time too. But the minute they went to compete with PKC on monthly races, on you know doing their own style of Super Stakes format – and having weekday hunts for $30 and stuff, I thought that's not going to work. There's already a place for that. That's already available. Uh, people are going to go do something else. But this is not available anywhere else. Uh, what you guys have going on here, you know, especially in the truck series, uh, you can't do that everywhere else in the format that you guys have it in. And so I think it works and it fits, and I think you guys are doing a fantastic job with it. I just – I everybody's got a niche and a, and a place to be and you know i think right now with the pro sport taking it slow is a smart idea yeah we we just wanted to keep basically just keep it real everything yeah. keep the integrity to it um we want good guys out here hunting you yeah. know that uh we don't want to get big enough where we've got to take it you don't want to be the next shane Patton with people calling you at 4 a.m you know, on we, a sunday we want uh <laughs> We we just want to we want to put a we want to put a quality event on. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'm getting ready to go to a lot of these, and I'm going to be hopefully behind a dog, some and behind the camera the rest of the time, or in front of the camera. But uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job, and you and Levi and Greg, uh, my hats off to you. They're fantastic events. Uh, you know, I really appreciate you sitting down with me, Scott. If there's anything else you want to add, feel free to chime in. But, you know, I'm I'm just really appreciative of what Pro Sport and you guys are doing. Well, I just thank you guys, uh, Joy, Wade, and all you guys for, for, for coming aboard with us and partnering up here with us on this. And, and uh, thank all the coon hunters that yeah. that come to these things. And and believe me, we're trying. Yeah. So if, if, if you don't like something, call and tell us and, and – uh, Call you or call Greg? Call Greg. <laughs> no, you'll get more done with me probably. <laughs> Levi. Call Levi. Levi. Well, uh, and um, Levi's number is. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we've enjoyed it. We're, we're going to continue to enjoy it. Look forward to this. Look forward to joy. You guys are going to shoot the final round, right? We are going to well shoot the final we're round. We're going to shoot the final round. We're going to – what we plan on doing is 
doing just a lot because these dogs are so amazing and these handlers are so amazing and where the vents are held and in the, the format and stuff i'm really excited about and we feel like it's something that everybody needs to experience and not everybody can experience driving all the way down to alabama and paying a thousand dollar entry and hunting for yep. a truck and they're not everybody's going to get a hunt with echo and get a hunt with nikki hale and up and all these amazing dogs that are here and and so if we can bring that to people that are sitting at home, you know, watching their TV, we're all for it. Yeah, you bet. Well, that sounds uh, that sounds good. I'm looking forward to the super hunt. You said it's when February. It's going to be in February. Uh, we're going to, of course, we're going to do a lot of lead up with that. And so, you know, Houndsman XP is is partnered in on that too. They're with Joy as well, and we're with them. And we're, there's going to be a lot of coverage. Uh, the Joy Facebook page, the Joy YouTube channel. Uh, of course, there's going to be stuff on Pro Sports social media as well as Houndsman XP. So it's going to be a big run up, and we're going to get because these are three amazing dogs. You know, these are two world champions and a dog that's won 300 grand in a year. We're going to get them together and let people experience what it's like to be out there with them. And we're going to do that to the best of our ability. And there's going to be a lot of cameras in the woods. It's going to look like a, no other final cast in the, any major event. I don't think the amount of coverage is going to be there. So it's going to cool. be a lot of fun. And we're going to have Nick with us. Yes, Nick's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the man behind the scenes. Very good, very he's, good. He's got a face for radio, so we'll keep him back over there. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, I appreciate you sitting down with me, buddy. Thank you. All right, this is Josh Michaelis, and you are listening to The Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network. We thank you for joining us.